So I've been very into the Dream SMP lately, and I decided that I wanted to make some form of art for it. But unfortunately, the main form of art that people seem to be making are animatics, and I am definitely not good enough at drawing to make one of those. So instead, I decided to use my sewing skills and sew the flag of Lemanberg. I started off by drawing out a scale mock-up of the flag in one of my notebooks, which you can see here. I colored it in after that, just because coloring is fun, and also because I didn't want to mix up any of the pieces of fabric, which I actually did do later, but since I had the mock-up, I caught it in time and everything ended up being fine. Here it is colored in with some of the measurements along the side. Also, I'm sorry it keeps panning down, iMovie is the worst. I started by measuring out the black fabric for the top of the flag, which was actually just the remnants of an old pair of jorts I made like three years ago and kept around for some reason. After that, I proceeded to iron out the fabric with my tiny iron that I inherited from my grandmother. I took my tape measure and marked the correct spots with tailor's chalk, and then took a pair of scissors and cut off the excess. By the way, I did eventually take out that seam just because it was getting in the way. With the black fabric done, I moved on to the white fabric next, which was muslin instead of denim, and therefore a lot easier to work with. Here I'm ironing out the panel for the bottom of the flag. However, since I didn't actually have any yellow fabric anywhere, I cut out the yellow X and the yellow stripe from the white fabric too, and I ended up having to dye it yellow. More on that later. Here I'm cutting out the red panel for the bottom of the flag. It's really more of a cranberry than a red, but you know, you do what you can with what you have. Also, I had to recut this piece just because the bottom cut I did was so crooked. You can see that, that is not a straight line. Thus begins one of the problems I had with this project, in that I struggled to cut anything straight at all, including both of these pieces of fabric, which are eventually going to be the X's, for the bottom of the flag. One of them was so crooked that I just ended up using it as practice for the X's, as you can see here. By the time I got around to cutting out the blue panel, which was my last piece of fabric, I had discovered that marking the entire cut with Taylor's chalk was the way to go, as opposed to just marking the points and then kind of winging it in the middle. And then it was time to take my first pass at dyeing fabric, so I put some salt and water in a pot, and I brought it up to a boil. With the water and salt boiling, I could put the fabric in. Which I did. With the fabric in the pot, I turned the heat down from a boil to a simmer. I let the pot simmer for an hour, which was enough time for the salt to act as a fixative, which means it will help the fabric retain the dye better. Once it had been an hour, I took the pot off the heat and strained the fabric to get rid of the water. I then refilled the pot with more water and took out the turmeric, which is what's going to make it turn yellow. I put the turmeric into the water, I think it was two tablespoons maybe, and then I brought it to a boil. Also, turmeric looks really pretty when you combine it with water like this. So here's me swirling it around with a wooden spoon for like two minutes. It looks pretty. It had been 15 minutes and the dye was simmering, which meant I now had to turn up the heat and bring it to a boil. Also, in the meanwhile, I wrung out the fabric to get the water out. 15 more minutes later, the dye was really boiling. So I turned off the heat and took the lid off the pot to put the fabric in, getting steam all over my camera lens in the process. I put each piece of fabric in one at a time, making sure that each one was fully covered by the dye so that they would get an even coating of color. With all three pieces of fabric in, it looked like this. 10 to 15 minutes later, I checked the color of the fabric with my wooden spoon. It looked quite orange, so I decided it was probably about time to take it out. In the end, it was very orange, so we decided to put it in the washing machine and see if that helped take some of the color out. It actually did work, and here's what it looked like when it first came out of the washing machine. The next day, after it had dried, it actually turned the exact color I'd wanted, so... Success, I guess. After it was fully dried, I ironed out the creases with my tiny, tiny iron. And so here's all the fabric cut out. Well, not fully cut out, but 
cut out in rectangles. I say not fully cut out because I then had to cut out the curve, which proved to be far more difficult than I initially thought. Here I'm trying to build a makeshift compass of some sort, the mathematical kind, not the navigational kind. I did my best to make sure the curve of the yellow stripe and the curve of the black fabric lined up, but somehow I messed it up because I'm not very good at math, and they didn't. So as you'll see in a few moments here, the black fabric and the yellow fabric didn't quite line up exactly. <laughs> yeah, there you go, they're not quite the same size. And then this was just all the fabric laid out together because I wanted to feel like I had accomplished something. The next step was to mark the tops of the panels with Taylor's chalk to make sure that I cut along the right curve so that it lined up with the yellow stripe. Also, I know that the red is on the wrong side. I eventually caught that. It took me a little bit, but I got there. It was at this point that I realized I had what appeared to be a solution to my problem of not cutting things straight. An omnigrid which is basically just, yeah, a big ruler. I began by trimming the sides of the X's and then cutting them out. I started with the red ones because there were two of them, so I at least had a practice. Sorry, I did it mostly off camera. I didn't realize this angle was what it was. But eventually I did the yellow and I trimmed off the edges that had gotten a little messed up in the dyeing process. And then I set about cutting it into an X. And there are all the X's laid out on the flag. After that, I decided to try and straighten out the cuts of the yellow stripe and the top of the flag, which went slightly awry because I misread the omnigrid. Yeah, I'm really great with numbers. And then I trimmed the panels as well to try and make the curve line up a little better. And then I just laid it all out to try and see what it would look like. I then decided I was going to trim the colored panels down to size, which I did, but again, I misread the omnigrid and cut them an inch too short as a result, which led to me having to cut them out all over again. Now that I had cut out all the fabric and it was the size it needed to be, I could finally start sewing. So here I am pinning together the colored panels. I started with those because sewing straight seams is infinitely easier than sewing curved seams. With everything pinned together, I could finally start sewing. Here I am with my sewing machine from 1963, tearing it up. Also, you can see my face in some of these. Please don't judge me too harshly. After I'd put in both seams for the bottom of the flag, I ironed it out again and flattened down the seams, which is always important when you're sewing, so that it'll lie flat and look pretty. Once that was done, I did the seam connecting the yellow stripe in the top of the flag. It was a curved seam, which meant it was a bit harder, but it still wasn't too bad. I pinned it off camera just because it was hard. <laughs> And then I ironed it out, and you may notice that there's a second one in the background. Yes, I did originally start by making two of them. I wanted to do one as like a test, and then the second one would hopefully be better. But I, I kind of gave up, and you'll see why in a little bit. So here you can see the two bottom parts and the two top parts of the flag. And now I'm going to pin the top to the bottom really absurdly crookedly. I don't know why I thought that was on straight, but I didn't film too much of this because it was really, really hard to do. And then I set about sewing the top to the bottom. This was definitely the hardest seam in the whole project. It wasn't absurdly challenging by any means. I mean, I've made like suits before. Those were really hard, but this, this particular seam was definitely the most difficult but yeah, this was the seam that made me give up on making two flags instead of one. And here the flag is, and I laid out the X's on top just to see how it was going to look, and also so that I could pin them on correctly. And here I am pinning them on. As usual, I took a bit more care with the yellow X than I did with the other ones, just because, you know, I don't have any backup yellow fabric. <laughs> but yeah, this was just to keep them in place while I sewed them on so that they didn't move around or do anything like that. Get up and walk away, you know. And here the flag is, with the X's pinned on where they're going to be sewed. And thus began the endless, laborious, three-day process of sewing on the three X's. Which is another reason why I'm glad I only ended up doing one of the flags instead of two. <laughs> yeah, this took me three whole days. I blanket stitched each of the X's on by hand, as you can see, because that is the only embroidery stitch I know how to do well. Yeah, sewing by hand just takes an absurd amount of time and effort. I actually still have a callus on my finger from doing this. Oh, and it's day two already. 
If you're wondering why I'm wearing a coat, it's because my house is freezing literally all of the time. I'm still working on the first X here. I did so on the second X, but I didn't record it because I forgot. Here's the flag with the first two X's sewn on, and after that all I had to do was the yellow one. And so it was that for the third day running I spent multiple hours of my day hand sewing. Sewing on the yellow X was a little more difficult because I didn't actually have yellow embroidery thread, I just had yellow friendship bracelet thread from like 2014. So I ended up using that, and it frayed and broke a lot, which was uniquely challenging, I would say. But in the end, I got it done, and it looked pretty good, I think. So after that, the only thing I had to do was hem the edges and make it neat, and then hang it up, obviously. However, the problem with this was that since I had sewed the top of the flag on crookedly, I wasn't sure if the bottom hem was going to be straight or not. Yes, yeah, so I had to undo and redo the bottom hem several times, and then try and measure as best I could and make sure it was all even. It was a challenge, I'll say that. It was challenging. Here I'm putting in the side hem, which I guess I didn't film myself pinning, but I did. There are pins in it. And there I am sewing on the second side. Well, not sewing on, but hemming, you know. I brought out the good old Omni grid, which I could now read correctly, and laid out the flag in an attempt to make sure I didn't sew the top hem crooked again. I also had to make sure it was wide enough so that I could put something in to hang it up, so I had to watch my seam allowance as well. And there I am finishing the seams, and there it is all sewed together. Wow! It actually didn't end up being crooked. So, to hang the flag up, I went and got two kitchen skewers and put one in either side of the top of the flag. I then took my sewing scissors, I really should have used regular scissors, but you know, and carved a notch in either side, at approximately the same point. I then took my good old friend the yellow friendship bracelet thread, and measured out what I figured would probably be enough to hang it up. I tied a double knot around each end. You can see I'm, I'm measuring out there, trying to figure out if I'll be able to hang it up well or not. And then I finished it. Ta-da! There it is. It's being held up. And so I hung it on my wall, and it looks pretty good, <laughs> I must say. It's there for now, but when I go back to college, I'm gonna bring it with me. So yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, if you're still here. Like, subscribe, whatever. Hang around. But for now, I'll see you later. Peace out, home skillets. <laughs>